What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to do an RGB kind of glitch transition inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name's Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out weekly videos and tutorials helping you guys grow as creators. So if you have not already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to create a really cool RGB glitch transition. If you have not seen my other video showing how to do drag and drop transitions, I'll link it up here and in the description below. Check that out. It will show you how to save it and then pull from it later and just have drag and drop. This specifically is just a glitch transition I'm not going to show you how to save it if you want to learn that check out the other video so let's dive inside DaVinci Resolve and we'll go from there first thing I'm gonna do is highlight all this I'm gonna delete it and I am gonna add some new clips from up here a bonus tip for you guys is I would go ahead and have your edit roughly locked in before you would start dragging and dropping transitions too many people just start slapping them on and not having an idea of what their edits gonna look like in the end and then it kind of just looks mushy so I'd have a rough edit of what you're gonna do before you would start applying transitions as you can see I already set my speed ramp through these clips I already knew what I was gonna do before I applied the transition to make it look better speed ramping is not necessary for this transition but it did work really good in this case in these video clips that I had I'm not gonna dive into speed ramping if you guys want to learn more about that I'll link another video up here and in the description below check it out learn about speed ramping it's a really good trick to have so after we have our clips selected we're gonna go in here and we are gonna grab our placeholder and we're gonna drop that in again I'm not gonna get into the placeholders that will be in the other video that you need to check out if you haven't seen it already I'm gonna drag this over to the beginning I know this is a 24 frame transition so I'm just gonna go the 12 frames right here I'm gonna make sure this is selected I'm gonna hit shift M to add a marker right in the middle to help it snap in the place after I have it in the middle I'm gonna hop inside the fusion tab once we're inside Fusion, I am gonna hit Shift Spacebar and I am gonna look for a blur. And we're gonna look for a directional blur. We're gonna click it right here. We're gonna add it. We're gonna hold Shift and the mouse at the same time, drag it in there. And then right here, we're gonna hit Shift Spacebar one more time and we're gonna look for a transform. Once again, Shift and the mouse at the same time, drag and drop and it's in there. The first thing we're gonna do is click on the directional blur and I'm gonna go right here and you can see if I crank that strength up, it's really giving you a serious strong directional blur. You can move it around, do whatever you wanna do, add glow, um, but we're gonna tweak with it a little bit more to make it stylized to what we want. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to get that back to the beginning. Then I'm gonna move this just enough so I can see that it's got some blur. I'm gonna hop in here into the second tab right here with the gear on it and we're gonna start messing with some colors. Let's see if I take the green off, maybe if I take the red off instead, or if I take the blue off. That's pretty cool right there. But we'll just do just the green off for now. I'm gonna jump back into the blur, and then if I crank it way more, you can actually still see the image because we've taken one of the colors out. So it's not the full image is blurring, not every color is blurring. I suggest playing with it and finding what color looks best for you. I think I prefer the green being gone, so we're gonna jump back over here. We're gonna make sure this is back on zero. We're gonna scroll right to the beginning and we're gonna add a keyframe right here on strength. And we're gonna add one on glow. We're gonna go over one, two frames. We're gonna turn that directional blur up a little bit. We're gonna go over one, two more frames. We'll drop it back down a little bit. One, two, three frames. We'll move it this way. And we'll go one, two more frames. We'll do it here. One, two, three. And we'll turn it right about there. Should be good. You don't have to follow my keyframes exactly. I'm just giving you a rough idea of how I would do it. There's really no right or wrong way of doing it. I'm actually just kind of tweaking with it, seeing if I like it. If I don't, go back, delete the keyframes, and I'll just try it again. We'll play that through, see how that looks. That actually looks pretty cool. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some glow. So we're gonna go in two frames right here. We had already dropped a keyframe at the beginning, so I'm gonna turn the glow up a little bit. I'm gonna go over just one frame. I'm gonna drop it back down to zero. Maybe 
gonna be right here on six. We'll add another one. Crank that way up. One more. Once again, we'll play that through, see how it looks. And I actually think that looks really cool. Inside the transform node, we're gonna click on it. We're gonna uncheck use size and aspect. So it's not locking them together. It's not locking the X and the Y together. If that was checked and I size this up, it's gonna move everything at one time. But if I uncheck it and I size it like this, it's only doing the X right here and this is doing the Y right here. So we want that to be unchecked. We're gonna go two frames in. We're gonna add a keyframe on both of these. I'm gonna go over one, two frames. I'm gonna size that up a little bit. I'm gonna go back over. There should be good. We'll hit that little dot. We'll take it back to one. We'll go over one, two. We'll actually go back one. We'll click right here on the Y, go over two. Do it like that. Turn that back down right here. And that one. Maybe add one more right here at the very end. We'll add a keyframe again. Go over, size it up a bit. And right there. Play that through. And yeah, I think that adds just that little extra pop glitchiness of it that it needs. Uh, you don't have to have that transform, but I personally like it. It kind of distorts it a little bit and freaks it out. One more thing you can do to just push that a little bit more is in the transform node under the flip right here. If we flip that and click this button, it's gonna change things. So what we can actually do is add keyframes. So I can go right here, the number one, click the frame, go over one, two frames, click that, go over one, two more frames, Click it again and uncheck it. Now, if we watch that through, it flips it. I wouldn't go too crazy with this, but you could add a couple of them in there and it's really gonna push that glitchiness. The more effects you start adding on top of it, the more it's really gonna start getting distorted. But again, that's style and taste to the creator. Jump back into the edit page, watch that through. And if you like that, I think that looks really cool. Uh, if you wanna learn how to save these and have it to where you can drag and drop later, again, link in the description below for the video where I talk about that. Check it out, it will save you time down the road. Uh, but that's it for me today, guys, that's all I got. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below and some new videos you wanna see coming out. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant, I'm out.